hit it. Meet me at the intersection. It's time to make a great connection. Faith, fun, and family meets. So come on in and take a seat at Sundays at the intersection. Woo! Welcome to Sundays at the Intersection. We're delighted to be spending this time with you. We're going to be learning about Jesus' parables. So take a look and enjoy. What's on the menu? All right, ladies, I'm going out of town for a bit on some work stuff, and I need you all to prepare the piano to play some music for the annual work conference. Oh. Ooh, um, well, how long are you going to be gone? What, yeah, how, long what, what, how long do we have? How long do you come back? Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure. I just, it's kind of just a work thing, but use your talent. It'll all be okay. I'm back. What do you what? have to show me? No, no, no! I, I, I want to practice. What are you smiling for? Let's talk about the parable of the talents. The main course. Today we're going to talk about the parable of the talents. talents. It's found in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. Yes, girl. It's an interesting parable. I know the first time that I learned about it, I was confused. How could he be passing out different talents to different people? That was confusing to me. I think- It can be. Yeah, Lisa's gonna help us understand it. And I think you might notice something. Her future's so bright, you know. I gotta wear shades. She just gotta wear those shades. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but shades. we're gonna just go with it. I'm just tired of Christy it. being the cool one all the time. I feel like this- <laughs> Yeah, right. This, this ups it for me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay, so Lisa, dig in, tell us about the parable of the talents. I'll do the best that I can because this really is a good parable mm -hmm. and I hope that we can all learn something from it. Let me give you a little bit more detail about what was going on at the time. Jesus was telling this parable to the disciples specifically. In other parables, he's addressing great crowds, other small groups. This was to the disciples and the timeline of it is just a little bit, not too long before when he was arrested and subsequently was crucified and saved the world from their sins. Yeah, just, just a little bit yeah, of important Yeah, he was, stuff there was a, on the happen. brink of exciting things. Oh, and then he ascended to heaven too. So, okay. he, yeah, he, so he was reminding the disciples in a gentle and creative way, these things are going to be happening. And of course he did it in a metaphor. Okay. All right. So four characters in the story. I know, yeah, that, we've so, had that before. We've had that before. And then one of the main characters is the master. Okay. okay. I think we might've had that no, before too, master. Have. And then there are three servants. Okay. The master comes and tells them I'm going away for a long time. Not sure where I'm going to be back. And he entrusts them with talents. Okay. And like Christy said, this is not the talent kind of talents that we understand. We understand talents is like, here is your athletic ability <laughs> and here is your artisticness and here is your ability to be a math whiz. Or your musical uh, oh, I thought you were going to do noodle fingers. No, I'm doing oh. my, my amazing piano work that you all saw on this skit. <laughs> that was, she's amazing. I know. She, I right know. to Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's something y'all don't know about me. But That's right. Yeah. Okay, it's true. Go ahead, ask her. Anyway, moving on. Talents was an amount of money back then, okay? And a significant amount of money. And one of the interesting things is the master says to them, he or he gives them the certain amount of money according to his ability, and it's not the same. So they didn't all get the same amount. Right. So we'll okay. talk about that later. First servant 
is given five talents, second one is given two, and the third one is given one. Okay? okay. He leaves. Now, he comes back at an unspecified time and says, okay, I entrusted you with these things of mine. What have you done? And the first servant who we had given five to said, I worked hard. I did the best that I could. I invested it. I used my brain, everything that I could, and I doubled it. Wow. All right. Awesome. Yep. Then the master went to the one he gave two to, and he said, I also worked very, very hard as best as I could. I doubled that for you too. Okay. Same thing. Yes. And the master was like, you know what? This is so great. Since you did well with a few things, I'm going to make you in charge of more things. So he rewarded both the first and second servants with even more responsibility because they proved themselves. Gets to the third servant, and that servant says, well, I was a little bit scared of you and I didn't want to take a risk and so you know what I did I dug a hole in the ground and I protected that talent so nothing's happened to it but here's the one that you gave me so he just was risk adverse he was just trying to be safe maybe maybe but maybe he was being a little lazy maybe he didn't have faith maybe he just didn't it's hard to know we don't know a whole lot of detail what we do know is that he did nothing with the talent that was given to him. And we do know that the master was not pleased. Take a look at that parable and read about it. So let's dig into what in the world does this mean for us? What was Jesus trying to tell the disciples? You all, or y'all down here in Tennessee. You've been here 15 years. I've been here 15 years. you saying y'all by now. Yeah, y'all. Okay, y'all. All right, here's the deal. We know that Jesus ascended to the heaven. We don't know when he's going to be back. And he gave each of us an amount of talent. No, it may not be a certain amount of money. And the, what's beautiful about the translation into the English language is we understand what that kind of talent is. Now for Chrissy, he gave the piano ability, mm. you know. Um, and for those of you, I want you to start thinking about what did God give to you? What talents did he give to you to grow, to invest, to work hard, to make better? Because the different disciples, they all had different abilities too. And Jesus is telling us, as long as we are here on earth, we need to do everything that we can to represent the master, God Almighty, well, and to spread our talent out and to use it to show his love and to uh, show people, when people say, wow, you're so good at what you do, why? You can say, I want to represent my God as well as I can because he's the one who gave this talent to me. And, you know, when I grew up practicing the piano, you know, I may not mm -hmm. have said that when I, when I was little, but I know that when I go into jobs now, I definitely want to represent him and my family and my church as best as I can. So that was the idea behind the different talents for each of the different guys. It's yeah. just like God's giving us all, giving us all different talents and abilities and yeah. he wants us to use them and don't, not, not hide them. Don't hide them. Don't no. hide them under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. no. Yeah. So let it shine. Let your talents shine. Yes, do I it. I love it. Thanks, Lisa. So now you guys know a little bit more about the parable, parable of, of the, the talents. talents. Dessert. Yum. This the light of mine, and I'm gonna let it shine. This the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.
intersection. It's time to make a great connection. Faith, fun, and family meet. So come on in and take a seat at Sundays at the intersection. Woo!